In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps of creating a Noodle Tools citation for a website. So if you look at my screen, what we have here, I'm going to be toggling back and forth between two tabs. This first tab is an empty Noodle Tools project. And this tab right here is the website that we're going to be citing. This is an ultraviolet um, ray information site that we are using with sixth grade science. So I'm going to be moving back and forth between these two tabs. Uh, as if I were using this website in my research and I needed to create a citation to give credit to the original author. So beginning in Noodle Tools, the first thing I'm going to do is click the green button that says Create New Citation. And the first prompt is, where is it? In this case, it's obvious this is a website. And you'll notice when I click Website, there's a drop-down menu. For the purposes of keeping life easy, almost always, unless you know specifically otherwise, almost always I'm just going to choose the top default web page. Whenever I have to clarify what is it, I'm going to say web page. And that's going to bring up the empty Noodle Tools form. This is the form where we fill in all of the blanks with the corresponding information. So to create this website citation, the first thing it asks for is the URL. The URL is the address, the link up in the top address bar of your browser. So I'm going to go to the page, highlight that URL, and I'm going to copy it, and go back to Noodle Tools, put my cursor in the URL box and paste. That is done. The next two things are two dates, the date of publication and the most recent date of access. Going back to this page, I can tell the date of publication is going to be right up here at the top, September 6, 2001. Not every website is going to be very clear as to when it was published or updated, so you might need to look around. A lot of the times it might be at the top, it may be something that you scroll to the bottom and see an updated date, or very often your website might not tell you at all. If it doesn't tell you, you would just skip it. But in this case, we have a date, September 6, 2001. So I'm going to go to Publication dropdown and choose September 6, 2001. And that's our date of publication. The most recent date of access is almost always going to be the day that you're creating it. If you're creating a citation, you're probably looking at the website at the same time. So that's why Noodle Tools gives you this option to just click the link that says today. When you click that, it automatically fills in the date of access as today's date. Now, obviously, if you have extenuating circumstances, you can go in there and do some slight changes. But most of the time, you're probably going to leave it with the day's date. The next piece of information we're looking for, Noodle Tools is asking for contributors, meaning an author, an editor, someone who's taking responsibility for the creation of this information. And if I go back to the website right at the top, I can see Jeannie Allen is listed as my author. So I can choose author and fill in Jeannie Allen's name in the Noodle Tools box. If there's more than one person indicated, there's a link here to add another contributor. And when you click that, it adds a second set of boxes. Uh, if it's not there, you just click the red X to make it go away. The next two pieces of information are related. The web page or document article title and the name of the website. These are often confused by students, so let's talk about this. This is an individual article title, the individual page, and this is the overall website. So if we go back and look at this page, we want to look at this thinking about which might be the individual title and which is the overall website. In this case, I think that the individual page title is Ultraviolet Radiation, How It Affects Life on Earth. The overall website is NASA Earth Observatory. And one thing you can do to check that, you can use the graphic design layout to verify. You'll notice if I start clicking other links on the web page, this stays the same, whereas other things down below start to change. That's a clue. Because this is staying the same, the NASA Earth Observatory banner at the top the graphic design is indicating this is the overall website. It's like an umbrella, and it covers thousands of individual pages within it. So in this case, I know that ultraviolet radiation, how it affects life on Earth, is my individual title. I'm going to copy and paste that into this box. And you'll notice when I pasted, it got a little uh, wonky with the formatting. You might need to go in there and do a little manual cleanup, erasing extra spaces. And Noodle Tools is also pretty good about indicating any problems. You notice the red squiggly line. That's a clue that something is misspelled or maybe a grammar mistake. They also have a little warning triangle. And if I mouse over the warning triangle, it tells me the first letter of the word it 
should most likely be capitalized. So I can go in there and manually correct it. And you'll notice once I do that, all of the warnings disappear. I can also go back to the web page and verify. In this case, I can see, yes, it is capitalized. It's just that the font is written in a way that makes it look a little bit smaller. So now that this is correct, I can go to the name of the overall website and type NASA Earth Observatory. And the last thing that I need to fill in is the publisher of the site. In this case, this website is pretty obvious. My publisher is NASA. If it's not obvious to you who the publisher is, the publisher is the owner who is responsible for ownership of this site. And very often that can be found by looking for the copyright symbol. If you find the C with a circle around it, there's going to be a date next to it. The copyright date doesn't really have anything to do with the date of publication, so don't get confused by that. We're not going to use the copyright date for anything, but we can use the copyright to find the publisher. The company name listed next to the copyright symbol is often going to be the publisher, so that can be a clue. Once you've filled in as many of these boxes as possible, in this case we got most of them, once you've filled them all in, you click Submit, and your citation is automatically put in the correct order with the correct formatting and punctuation, and you're done. That's creating a website citation. Now, thing to note, every website is a little bit different. Not every website you find is going to tell you an author, or not every website is going to tell you a date. Okay, every website is a little bit different, and it's going to kind of be up to you, using your judgment, to figure that out. My general rule is your citation should have at least three citation elements. Otherwise, it might not be the most reliable source. If you can't find at least three citation elements, you might want to find that information elsewhere. Okay, a really solid website that you can trust for your webs for your research will tell you an author or a date or a, hopefully both. Um, so keep that in mind whenever you're creating your website citations. And let me know if you have any questions.